So you've been playing on controller your entire life and you've finally made the decision to switch to mouse and keyboard. However, you have no idea where to even start. It is very daunting. There's so many different keys. There's so many different mice. There's so many different products. Where do I even start? Well, in this video, I'm going to share my five tips on how you can get started on playing mouse and keyboard and making that transition just a tiny bit smoother. Thank you to these people who commented on my last video. If you do want to be in a video, comment down below on this video and I'll put you in the next video. Remember, if you're enjoying the video, be sure to give the video a like and while you you're down there you can subscribe if you haven't already it helps the channel a lot more than you think it helps us push through the algorithm helps this video get to more people the first tip i want to talk about in this video is do not please please do not be intimidated us gamers when we're playing our games we are only using a finite amount of keys on that keyboard so when we make keybinds we're obviously not going to place keybinds on the other side of the keyboard we're not going to be using those semicolon all those weird keys on the right hand side of the keyboard that we normally don't even use so we're just mainly going to be using the left side of the keyboard so take a deep breath don't be intimidated and let's move on to the next tip so for my second tip we're going to be talking about which keyboard and mouse products to choose there are a lot, a lot, a lot of bad products out there, and there are also a lot of good products out there. You just have to do your research to find what fits you best. What kind of keyboard do you want to get? Do you want to get a full size, a, t a 10 keyless, a 60%, a 65%, you name it. Do your research, find the different types of keyboard products out there. Same with the mice. You don't want to buy a $10 mouse on Amazon or use your home office mouse that you use for emailing and editing or whatever that may be. You don't want to use stuff like that for gaming it's just it won't feel appealing to play the game and it would probably be de demotivational okay so let me show you what the average person would do if they were going to go find some mouse and keyboards online they're going to go to amazon.com here's what they're going to do they're going to type in cheap mouse and keyboard boom Ma cheap mouse and keyboard boom 29 dollars eh 14 dollars eh you know, scrolling, 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 scrolling. Oh, okay, I see. Sixteen dollars, twelve dollars. Oh my gosh! What? It, what even is this? Blue Finger, eighty-seven key gaming, gaming keyboard and mouse combo, RGB rainbow backlit. This keyboard looks like plastic. Everything is fucking plastic on this thing. This is not what you want to look at. This is literally not what you want to look at. It's twelve dollars. You get what you pay for it. Mark my words. Go ahead and buy this and see. You'll come back to this video. You're going to comment. And you're going to say, Alex, you're right. So when you're looking to buy a mouse and keyboard set, you really do get what you pay for. If you're searching through Amazon, you're finding certain keyboard and mouse. You're like, ah, oh, ten dollars must be pretty good, right? Let me just try it and see if I like mouse and keyboard. You don't want to do that. You're going to want to do your research. You're going to want to find what people like. You're going to look at the reviews. You're going to read about certain products. You're going to read about what kind of key switches you're going to want, what kind of you know mouse feel you're going to want, what kind of mouse shape. When it comes to keyboard and mouse in general, we're going to want to stick to some of the big name brands. Those name brands have been around for a while, so they have worked out the kinks in their products. So you're going to want to stick to brands like HyperX, Logitech, Razer, Corsair, and even SteelSeries. There are some other good brands out there to just do your research, choose wisely. Don't be afraid to spend a little extra money. Don't be afraid to go to your local Best Buy or Micro Center and touch all the little displays and see how everything feels. Choose wisely and let's move on to the next tip. So, and moving on to the next tip, we're going to be talking about some beginner friendly keybinds. So lucky for you, I do make keybind videos. So if you do want to watch my recent keybind video, the keybinds are very easy to use. Keep in mind that all keybinds are for certain types of people and some people have different opinions on different keys on what to use some keys might be different some keys might not be uh, the best for some people however if you do want to try some beginner friendly keybinds click the video click the card go watch that video learn how to use some beginner friendly keybinds and these keybinds are keybinds that i still use to this day and you can still get clips with them and as you can see up on screen now, there are comments of people who really like those keybinds and have helped their game. So if you do want to give those a try, go watch that video. Another thing that I wanted to mention with this tip is that you want to keep your keybinds in unison with whatever FPS game you're playing. For instance, if you're watching my video, following the video, however, if you switch to Apex, you're probably going to want to transition those key bindings from Warzone to Apex Legends. That way your mind doesn't get confused on two different types of keybinds and you want to stick to pretty much the same you know core keybinds that way you can learn on how to play those fps games effectively 
And the fourth tip that I want to mention is don't be afraid to go into a Warzone private match or any type of private match. Maybe that would be Modern Warfare. Go practice your go practice your weapon control and your movement. That's what you want to do. You want to practice, practice, practice. Practice does make perfect. If you want to go warm up for 5-10 minutes before you hop into a public match, that also works as well. Just practicing, practicing, practicing. It will make perfect. You can work out the kinks, you can get even better. I even still do this, even being on mouse and keyboard for a little while. And you can just go ahead and, you know, 1v1 your friends, 2v2, do whatever to just, you know, get, you know, get the feel for it. Maybe do a little bit of practicing with bots. If you're trying to practice outside of actually playing the game, there is a game on Steam called Aim Lab. That could also really be beneficial to your aim. There actually are a lot of streamers that do this. They still do this to this day. They actually use it to warm up before they go on stream. So that's something else you could also try. However, aside from all these different side games that you could be playing, aim trainers and all that, the number one thing that you're going to want to do is just play the game. The only way you can get better is if you play the game. So play the game, watch the progression. You're going to get better in just a week. Follow my keybinding video. Play, play, play the game. Get a feel for it. Get some hours in, get some reps in, and get ready to drop some 20 bombs. The last and final tip that I want to give you guys is to absolutely never give up. If you've been trying Master Keeper for the last day or so, do not just you know quit right there you're gonna want to keep practicing and practicing and practicing you need time you need hours just quitting after one day is just not gonna help if you want to learn mouse and keyboard you have to actually just sit there and practice you have to die randomly you have to absolutely fail really hard you have to fail to succeed absolutely never give up on playing mouse and keyboard put down that controller pick up a mouse and keyboard another thing that you could probably do is just put your controller somewhere else you know adapt it to your needs you know change you know can change the sensitivity change the dpi there are benefits to keyboard and mouse that you don't have on controller but they're also you know it's very debatable out here with controller versus keyboard and mouse don't feel like you can get outgunned if you're on mouse and keyboard if you're playing if you've been playing controller for a while mouse and keyboard has its own benefits you can laser people People, you can do so much with it you can program it. it you just feel more in control so absolutely never give up if you know someone who's trying to make the transition send this video to them if this video helped you then chances are it'll help another person so if you want to share this video please do so so that just about sums up this video if you guys did enjoy this video again hit the subscribe button like the video share this with a friend who needs help with their keybind and how to make the transition from controller to mouse and keyboard i will see you guys next time hope you guys enjoyed this video and i will see you guys in the next video.